Look at how the Prophet ﷺ would engage with his companions in lifting up their spirits. But also as a reflection of his, of his humility ﷺ. Once he was coming back from uh, one journey and uh, uh, at the end of the journey, at the end was uh, the companion Jabir bin Abdullah an. And Jabir was a young, young man and uh, he was struggling to, to catch up with the rest of them. Even though he was very young, but he's, he couldn't catch up. And, and so the Prophet ﷺ left the front and then he rode back to the end where Jabir was. And he said to Jabir, what is up with you? Why is it that you can't catch up with us? And Jabir says, you see, it's my camel, Ya Rasulullah. My camel is so uh, incapable of uh, you know, going forth uh, with speed. And the Prophet says to him, give this uh, stick, staff to me. And Jabir gave him the staff and the Prophet took the staff and just you know, tapped against the camel and the camel suddenly woke up and came to life and began to sprint ahead, ahead, ahead. And Sahaba are amazed and they said, uh, how did that happen? What's happened? And Jabir says, uh, Asaba tu baraka, Asaba tu baraka, blessing, blessing has come upon the camel. And the Prophet was happy. And then later on in the day, the, uh, the Prophet ﷺ, uh, he met up with uh, Jabir on the journey back to Medina. And he said to uh, Jabir, how did you find the camel? How did you find the camel? And Jabir said, it's uh, wonderful, Ya Rasulullah. It's wonderful. Thank you. It's great. And the Prophet says to him, uh, Why wouldn't you sell it to me, O Jabr? And Jabr says, you know, and Jabr is thinking in his head, why on earth would I sell the camel for? If he had asked me maybe 10 minutes ago <laughs> when it wasn't moving, <laughs> then it, maybe. He's thinking in his brain, why would I want to sell the camel? But he's saying, Ya Rasulullah, no, Ya Rasulullah, just take it, just take it. And the Prophet is saying, no, sell it to me, sell it to me. And the Jabir is saying, no, you know. And then at the end, Jabir says, okay, how much would you like to take for it? And the Prophet says, uh, bidirham, bidirham. sell it to me for one dirham. And Jabir is so perplexed and he's thinking, well, obviously it's worth more than one dirham. I mean, that's kind of, you know, it's worth much more. But he can't say that, you know. But then he does. He says, Ya Rasulullah, you know, this camel, it's a worth more. He, he gets it, he says it, you know. And the Prophet said, okay, then uh, then sell it to me for two dirhams. And Jabir still is perplexed and he said, no, Ya Rasulullah, I mean, come on, it's worth much more than two dirhams, you know. And it goes up and up and up until it reaches half an ounce of gold. And Jabir remembers he has a debt to pay of, of that much amount of money and so he agrees and he says, Ya Rasulullah, that's yours. Prophet said, that's fine. And then he, the, but Jabra says, but let me ride it back at least to Medina. And, uh, and then tomorrow I will exchange hands and we'll give the camel to you. And so, uh, and so when Jabra is a, a reaching Medina, he begins to speed up on his, uh, on his camel. And the Prophet Sallam, he, he said, Ya Jabra, what is the hurry? What is the, what's the haste in getting back? And Jabir says, Ya Rasulullah, I'm, I'm newly wed, i am just been married. You know, I have obviously an eagerness to get back to my wife in Medina. And the Prophet says, who did you marry Jabir? Did you marry Bikran and Thayyiban? Did you marry uh, a young girl or an older woman? And Jabir says, no, you see Ya Rasulullah, what happened is that my mother died. And I have three sisters. And so I had to make a choice, a decision based upon my domestic circumstances. I, I wanted to marry somebody who is old enough to tend and look after my sisters. And so I married uh, an older woman. And the Prophet was so moved by his narrating of that life experience and story. He was so moved. And Jabir says that my riding back to Medina, I heard the Prophet ﷺ say more than 25 times behind me, Allah maghfir li Jabir. Allah maghfir. Oh Allah forgive Jabir. Oh Allah forgive Jabir. Meaning sending prayers upon him. He said more than 25 times. Jabir then gets back to Medina and he tells his wife the whole saga, the whole tale 
of what happened. But Jabbar still is feeling as if he needed that camel. Why did he sell? And, the, and his wife said, no, it's not your business now. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi is Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Why would you have a problem? And so then he feels satisfied and he goes the next morning, he goes out with his camel to find the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he sees Bilal radiallahu anhu. And so uh, Bilal has a pouch with the money and uh, and he hands it over to Jabal. Jabal, in looking at the money, he sees that that is the half an ounce of gold worth, and there is ziyada, there is a surplus, there's extra money. And so Jabal is quite perplexed and confused, and he's saying, well, it's great that there is extra money now for me. I can maybe sell the camel and buy another camel. And so he says, Jazak. and then he went, he went and found the Prophet himself, and the Prophet smiled at him and Jabir said to him, you know, Jazakallah khairan for the money and for the extra surplus money you gave. And the Prophet says to Jabir, where is the camel? Where is the camel? And Jabir says, the camel is right over there, Ya Rasulullah. And the Prophet smiled at him and said to him, I was never gonna, I was never gonna buy your camel in the first place. I was never gonna deprive you of your camel. I only wanted to spend five minutes of my time, of time with you because I could see that you were struggling in life, struggling on your journey and I wanted just to spend five minutes, you know, raising your hopes and your, uh, your wishes up. And Jabra was so taken aback by that response that in the narration it says that he left Medina screaming, screaming. And a non-Muslim passed him by and asked, what has happened, what has happened? And he said, I want to introduce you to my Prophet. And I swear by Allah that he is the best human being who has ever lived. وَعِبَادُ Rahman And the servants of Rahman are those who walk on the earth with hawna, with a sense of softness and peace. And when the ignorant ones address them, they say, Salam. And those who spend part of their night in worship, in prostrating to Allah and in standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As a final thing, we want to try and get to a state as believers where our active and passive responses are similar. Allah in the Quran. He speaks about those إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ Those are, are indeed إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ There's Tawqeed emphasis here. Allah says the believers are truly those الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ Those who when they're reminded of Allah. It doesn't even say those who when they remember Allah. That's different. But when they're reminded of Allah وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ Their hearts tremble. When they're reminded of Allah, their hearts tremble. وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُهُ And when the verses of Allah are recited upon them, زَادَتْهُمْ imana, Their iman increases. وَعَلَىٰ رَبِّمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ And upon their Lord, they place their trust.